Hey everyone, welcome to the new video. This one is going to be on the Kega Fusion emulator. Uh, so we're going to go ahead uh, right away, go ahead and open up your browser. And you're going to click on the link that I posted on the description for you. If you're looking at the top, that's what it should look like. Make sure you go to this website because you're going to need some plugins that some of the other websites don't have. So we're going to scroll down here. This is for Windows version. So we're going to go ahead and download that. You're going to save that to your download folder. You're going to do the same thing with uh, this file down here, which are the plugins. So you want to click on this one. You're going to save the plugins to your download folder. Once that is done, you're going to go ahead and travel to the folder that has those files. And you're going to go ahead and right click extract to. And then, you know, keep the name of the uh, extract file for the folder. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. Extract that one. You're going to go into the plugins folder. You're going to go in there and copy these files. Or easier way, just take, take, uh, go in that folder one time. Click on this. Cut that folder and paste it into your emulator folder. As you can see, for some reason, there's a folder with inside a folder. So just go ahead and cut that and paste it back. That way, you just have the one folder with everything inside. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and get out and get these out of the way. You can delete those. Now on this part here, this part with, where it says BIOS is going to be optional. These are some files that you're going to need if you want to run the uh, 32X ROMs and the CDs. Uh, these will be needed if you're going to run those. They're optional. You do not need them. Uh, uh, you know, you would have to find these uh, somewhere on the internet. You know how that goes. I can't tell you where to get them. So those are the names of the files you would need. So either screenshot that or, you know, write them down. And those are the ones you will need if you want to run the other, uh, you know, options for the CD and the 32X. With the one we're going to show you now, this is going to run the, uh, the ROMs. So we can also go ahead and delete this. And then what we're going to do is create a folder called ROMs in here. guys we're gonna go ahead and uh, keep going here now that we have the ROMs folder in here you will notice I got a BIOS folder right now uh, you know paste it into the folder also go ahead and disregard that one for now we're gonna mess with that later so now that you made the ROMs folder go ahead and open that up within that folder you're gonna create one called Game Gear Genesis and 32 x Sega CD Sega Master System now keep in mind you may or may not want to run those but if you do you want to want to you know, go ahead and create them with those file names on there. All right, so now for the Game Gear, the Game Gear is going to be able to run two kinds of games. It'll do the SG ROMs and also the Game Gear ROMs. If you are going to have SG games, I recommend you put SG in front of it because that way if you accumulate a lot of them in the folder, you're going to want to know which ones are, uh, you know, the SG ROMs and which ones are the regular Game Gear. So we'll back out of that. And then the Genesis, like I said, that will do both. It'll have the 32X and the regular Genesis ROMs. The Sega CD will have just the Sega CDs in there. If you do come across images of those, or if you make your own, you're gonna wanna put that inside a folder within the Sega CD folder with the name of the game. And then the Sega Master System obviously will go inside there. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and start up the emulator. Now, for right now, you're going to want to leave it, uh, you know, just the regular windowed box here. I just noticed that for some people and also mines, uh, if you do uh, try to go full screen without a couple of uh, scenarios, it's not going to work on the modern computers. So we'll leave it like this for now, and I'll show you how to get around that if the error does also happen to you. So let's go over to the options window. We're going to hit set config. We're jumping over to the controllers, super, super easy to set that up. Just pick the type of controller you have, three buttons, six, you know, pad. Uh, usually recommend that if you have the Xbox or the PlayStation style controllers, then you're going to go in here, click use. It's going to know you have a gamepad, so click on that. Click on define, you'll notice the options change down here. So we're basically going to correspond to what's on the screen. So we're going to press up, down, left, right. A button, B button, C, start, X, Y, Z, and your mode button. Then we're going to come down here for the settings for the Master System and Game Gear. So you're going to leave that on Control Pad. 
pick your controller again define same exact thing with this one I click apply once you have that done your game controllers are all set up uh, to be used with that so we're gonna go up here and go to file now this setting here you're gonna need to do it one time and run a ROM once so the emulator will remember the directory so you're gonna go uh, master system so you're gonna go into ROMs then master system just launch that really quick and then you can go ahead and stop it okay so see I did get that error once I hit escape to go to full screen so I'll show you how to get around that if it happens to you also so we'll go ahead and now we're going to do the game gear same thing go to the ROMs folder game gear just launch any other ones in here same thing for the Genesis so low Genesis ROMs go into the Genesis folder launch that there we go and then we have a C if you have a CD it's not going to work right now because we haven't set it up so we can leave that one for last okay so we have those set up so now what we want to do is go ahead and set the video settings now uh, there's two ways around this if you get that error if you don't get the error you're fine if you try to go uh, full screen and it does this to you you get that unable to display mode uh, there's two fixes for it you can go ahead and try this one first you're gonna right click on the emulator executable uh, click properties you're gonna go over to compatibility you're gonna go change the setting and you're gonna click on here now as you can see that did not work for me because I'm still getting the error I'm gonna also try the compatibility mode and do XP run as administrator see if that helps gonna launch one real quick if it doesn't help I'm gonna show you the the last step and this one usually works okay as you can see now it did work for me so I was able to go full screen so the setting did work so if it doesn't work straight away with just the uh, the first step if it doesn't work with just doing uh, the change high DPI settings to this right here if that doesn't work then go right click on your executable properties compatibility and set it to this and run as administrator now I've also come across some people where that trick does not work if that does not I'm gonna leave a link for you for DG voodoo in the uh, description of the video you'll take all those files this is also super easy just paste that into your folder go into MS x86 copy all of these files and paste them into the folder you're gonna run DG voodoo one time you're gonna click on this little mark right here that's gonna set the directory to where you have your uh, emulator installed you're gonna click on DirectX now once you do that you, you can you know freely choose the full screen resolution that you want and it should not crash on you so I'm gonna show you on mine we're gonna go with that we're maxing that out anti lacing all the way up to eight go ahead and take the watermark off so that doesn't show every time you launch uh, you might want to click force v-sync in case the you know the frame rate tears when you're playing so go uh, click that one there in general you can go ahead and now if you have a very modern computer I recommend you use this sometimes if you use the older uh, direct uh, you know direct 3d features you might get uh, uh, like pastel colors or some of the you know boxes will come out white so go ahead and click that to 12 uh, everything else here we should be able to leave alone you can add uh, scan lines down here by clicking on that once you hit OK now when you launch it the game should be whatever resolution you picked and for some reason I'm getting an error okay that's because it put that back to zero so if it does that just jump back in and go ahead and pick the VRAM switch it again click apply 
apply <laughs> and it should go ahead and uh, keep the settings for you now we should be okay when we launch so we'll just launch something and make sure that we can go full screen there we are good to go no problems So we have that all good to go and the ROMs are going well. Now what we're going to do is do the settings with the BIOS. Now these files, I can't tell you where to go find them, but I'm going to leave this folder open for a bit so you can go ahead and look what they're called. So you're going to need those to be able to run the 32X and the Sega CDs. So if you do want to run those, go ahead and once you find them, just copy those. And you're going to make a folder called uh, BIOS and put them in there. As you can see, I already have them. Once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and launch the emulator again. You're going to go to the option. Once you do full screen, it's going to come out with this and it's going to look like the options are gone. Just right click. And you'll get that one down there. And for see, it's not working for me. So play it safe and just go ahead and change the options from uh, the window portion of it if it gives you that issue if not just right click and then you'll be able to get the, the options will come out here in the center for you so we're going to set config we're going to go to the Sega CD side and what we're going to do is put the names in here it's going to default like it's already something in there but it's not it's just showing the locations uh, and what the you know bin file will look like so go ahead go to your BIOS folder and then we're going to go to the one that it's asking for. So it asks you for the US one. So that's this one. So you're going to set that one. You're going to do the same thing for the Japanese one. Click that one. European BIOS. And this is necessary. Like if you want to run images that, you know, come from any of those countries, you'll be able to run them. Once those are all chosen, you're going to go ahead and click apply. OK. Now we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to set the 32X ones. So it's going to be GMS, so browse. So we got the G, M, S. So you're going to click apply. And then we should be good to go. So now if we choose to pick one of those ROMs, it should run fine. So let's try a 32X ROM. And I have the ROM folder, so that's why I gave me that error earlier. So I'm going to correct that by going into CD. <coughs> so let's do a 32X ROM. So I'll fix that location by going like this. And you can see another, like I said earlier, if you're going to have a lot of these, because uh, you have two you know, different styles in a folder, so you can leave the Genesis ROMs as is and then try and put 32X in front of the other ones so you can distinguish that from the Genesis ROM ones. So we'll go ahead and launch that and make sure that's working. So as you can see, now it's loading because we put those uh, the BIOS files in there. So now we can run that, and now we'll go ahead and test the CD. So we'll do the same thing. So we're going to load a CD image. And as you can see, that also loaded fine. Now with this setup here, once you've done this one time, it's going to remember the locations for you. So you don't need to go, you know, through the ROMs and pick the folder. It's going to automatically remember the locations where the games were at. So as you can see, pick the Game Gear, Genesis 32X, it's right there. And then the Sega CD. So you have to do that at least one time and launch it. That way the uh, emulator, you know, ret retains the location of where they were at. So you don't need to go in and out all the time. And then I'm going to show you one more thing here. If you do the uh, Game Gear ones, I'll go back here to your option screen. And this is going to uh, give you a couple options here. So you see this, I recommend you always put this on because a lot of the older games, when they had uh, a lot of graphics running at the same time, what it did to compensate for that was it would white out some, uh, you know, like the pixels. So the game could still keep running 
you know with the graphics on there but you would notice like some pixels almost like go transparent and disappear so if you click on this they'll go ahead and, and they'll stay solid one of the games you can notice that with I believe was bubble bobble where it'll show you you know like little pieces of the screen will disappear when characters overlap but this will stop that from happening and then this part here you can go ahead and click on this and what this will do is uh, go ahead and it'll keep the the Game Gear windows for you it'll go full screen and we'll go ahead and show you that right now what the difference is so if you were to load a Game Gear ROM see you notice how it went full screen there for you now if you leave it the other way it'll actually create a uh, you know mimic kind of like the border that was on the original Game Gear so you notice now it has like the little fake border like you actually had the handheld so those are differences that you can change on there alright so we're pretty much done as far as uh, what we set with you know there's other settings on here to go to full screen is the escape key uh, if it doesn't work for you like I showed you earlier or just try those uh, steps you know either the D, uh, G Voodoo to get that corrected or the uh, compatibility settings that I showed you uh, you can ask scan lines from here also uh, this will depend if you're using the uh, DG Voodoo, you may not need this because the DG Voodoo you can enable it or disable it, so that all depends on you. Now, on here, what you can do also to make the game probably look the best, you can go ahead and click on either the HQ4 with the DG Voodoo settings, you know, installed at the scan lines, and that'll make it look a lot, you know, kind of a little bit clearer for you. Or then you could also pick. Uh, the other so you can kind of play around with these and you know you can you will use whatever looks better for you I personally like that one there and this one here so I guess it's just a matter of preference of what you like so you should be able to get all the games running now and I did show you the uh, you know options to get that uh, error fixed if you do not uh, get the full screen to work properly so hopefully you guys enjoy uh, playing the old school games uh, if you guys have any comments go ahead and put those on the uh, you know in the comment section go ahead and please subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one